Hello out there, and a quick video today, fun video actually. I'm going to be doing some modifications uh, on two 556 Mini Griptilians, and what we have here is the 556-1 in 20 CV. This one has the gray and blue G10 scales. Um, really, really popular model. But what I have over here is a limited edition, and this is in M390, and yeah, there aren't very many of these out there. And what I thought when I picked this up was... Well, these black scales here are just a little bit too boring for uh, such a cool limited edition, and I thought it would be neat to do something different with them. And I had a buddy of mine, Blade Collector 7, was trying to, uh, to trade this knife away, and so what I figured is I could pick that up, maybe dye these G10 scales, and then put this 20 CV blade on the old black uh, scales, and have something nice and different for the M390. So you can see everything's already disassembled. We have the pieces safely put away in bags for the most part. Everything for the 20 CV blade moving over to here though is all done. And if you haven't seen how to reassemble an access lock, um, I'll show you that, especially just the last part actually, which is a little bit different, but it's the easiest way I know of doing it. I'll also link to my mini uh, Griptilian full disassembly video down below if you're interested in that. But today, yeah, we're just gonna dye the scales, the G10, and I do some dyeing of like plasticky scales, FRN, but very rarely G10, and it is a little bit more difficult, and the process is different. And just to catch me up, I did watch a YouTube video <laughs> from Love Them Knives, actually, so I will link to that down below. Uh, and just sort of had a refresher just to make sure I was doing everything right. And so, yeah, we're going to do that now and hopefully get a nice, like, deep purple or dark navy blue in order to give us a uh, little bit different kind of look. So hopefully that will go well. So you can see that the color that we are looking for is, like, this deep purple. Might add a little bit more blue into it. We'll see. The uh, the only concern, and I've seen people dye these scales before, but the only concern is you have to do something darker than the original color. You can't go lighter than what you already have, and these scales are not the lightest. You know, usually like a very light gray or a beige would be better, so I'm going to have to make sure to, uh, to have it dark enough in order to make it work. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so first of all, I had the wrong size pot. You're gonna need a pot that's deep enough so that your scales are not touching the bottom and the heat source, cause it'll just make a loud pop. And um, I don't know, I don't really think you want them, I don't know that they'd burn, but it really isn't the, uh, the best. So you want them suspended as much as possible. And so here I am having built probably the dumbest looking rig. <laughs> so I have paracord that each one of the scales is suspended by and it's hanging into the die. Yeah, that's that's real. <laughs> and it's really dumb, but if it works, it might be a little bit genius. I would 100% recommend doing it the way that um, other people do. But if this works out, then um, yeah, it'll be... Uh, It'll be a win, so we shall see. Now we are at the end of the experiment as far as the G10 uh, scales go, because those are dyed. Um, that system that I had, uh, the results came came out, the results are good, but the system was not good. So if you are trying to dye G10, don't do it the way that I did. The heat from um, from the pot just uh, made the, the tape fall off. It was it was a disaster. But like I said, at the end of the day, I, I do have results that I'm pretty happy with. Let's take a look at these scales. What I have is a different 555, uh, um, same kind of dash one uh, gray and blue scales. Just for comparison, you can see how deep that purple is versus the original gray. And then even though the blue isn't uh, completely dyed, you can see it is also just distinctly darker. So it did take a little bit of color uh, versus you know what originally that like lighter blue is. So I think the only way to really get these two to match would be if I went all the way black. And I didn't really want to do that. I had that ready as a last resort. If things didn't work out well, I was just gonna go all black and and end up with you know still a good looking G10, but uh, for what it is. 
uh, I really wanted just a little bit more color with the purple. And also, I'm not sure why, but um, but this one that Blade Collector 7 sent me had a Benchmade USA clip, and I'm definitely going to keep that on there because that is an awesome clip. So yeah, at the end of the day, I have an M390 uh, mini grip on G10 scales and sort of one of a kind and very cool. Uh, but I also have that 20 CV blade steel and I have it to put into these standard scales. And so I've done this before in the disassembly uh, video. I will, like I said, link to that down below if you want to check out the entire thing, if you have questions about any aspect of it or or how to get to this point, taking the, uh, the knife apart. And yes, this is how you actually put it back together. Uh, you do everything except for the blade. And so the washers, the pivot, and the blade left out of the handle are the last things that you have. Now, if you're doing a 555 or 556-1, it's going to be a little bit different just because the hardware is different. And also, curiously enough, what I, what I found is that on our show side, we have the female part of the pivot on the Dash 1 series and the male part on just the regular one. So sort of different, so if you're just uh, trying to, to use this method on different access locks, it might not be 100% the same, but I think for the most part, uh, it's gonna be able to work out for you. And so what I do is, well, what I do is, uh, it's pretty interesting, and I don't remember where I learned it, but uh, it was on YouTube, and it's the system that I've used for forever. So you can lubricate your pieces a little bit if you want, just put like a little bit of um, like lube on the actual uh, blade if you need to. I usually just do it afterwards. It's good to good to do it while the, the knife is out, but not really that big of a deal. And then, and doing this on camera is gonna be very difficult. What you wanna do is you wanna have the access bar engaged, so pulled open the entire time. And that takes a little bit of getting used to, and this whole process does take some getting used to, but once you master it, it's the easiest way to do this. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to insert your pivot bit by bit, see if we can see that, bit by bit through and build the, the knife inside as you do it. So here we have it and you can see that pivot just extending just a little bit beyond the liner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this first washer on. Excuse me if this is not all visible on camera, but I just use like a safety pin to make sure that it's over the pivot. And then I slowly push the pivot a little higher. See that? Now that's too high and it's not gonna allow room for the blade to go in. So you have to lower it just a little bit. So it does take a little bit of like push and pull See, and there's still not enough room to let the, the blade in. So pull it down a little more. And again, this whole time you can see my <laughs> my thumb is turning white because I'm holding the uh, the axis lock open the whole time. All right, and then you get the blade in and you push your pivot up a little higher. You can't see it at this point. But you push it up a little bit higher so it keeps the blade in, but there's room for the washer to go on top, the final washer. Yeah, my hands are totally shaking. <laughs> All right, so still, you can see, uh, white thumb, still holding it down. And then this last washer, we're just gonna slide in with the, uh, the safety pin and just center. Yeah, you can't even see it. Just center over the pivot so that the rest of the pivot can push through. And once you feel it push through on this side, it's all the way in, let go. And then you're gonna tighten your pivot screw um, once you let go. Woo, and guys, that was take one. <laughs> I am pretty proud of myself. And again, all this and more is in that uh, disassembly video if you wanna see the whole thing, but for those of you who have had issues taking apart a mini grip in the past. So, 
yeah, maybe needs a little bit of lubrication, maybe some adjustment to the pivot, but we have a knife that locks up beautifully. No problem with it. 20 CV blade steel on this. And look, <laughs> so that's going to happen, but I mean, pretty quick to be able to do that. And guys, the easiest way to, uh, to disassemble and reassemble an axis lock knife. All right, so any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. Definitely check out Love Them Knives because uh, his way of doing the dying of the G10 was far better than mine. But, uh, but at the end of the day, I think this worked out pretty darn well, and hopefully you got some useful information too. Thanks for watching, and take care, guys. Have a good one.